you have both been first. So, Sir Dingra, you were the first, were, are you the first Sikh elect legislator in the entire country? And then Rep. Eskamani, you were the first Iranian American elected in Florida. How has that shaped the work you do? And for women that are watching, how, how did you find that courage to be the first? And how do we get more women to surround us so we aren't the only voices in the room any longer? You know, that uh, I have to say, until I got elected, I didn't realize I was the first. Um, I have been a first my entire life. Um, when I graduated from law school, I went to work at the prosecutor's office. I was the first South Asian at the prosecutor's office, regardless of gender. Um, I got involved in criminal justice reform and working with law enforcement and crisis intervention training. I was training law enforcement officers, and I got to tell you, many times, a lot of times I was in a room doing these trainings and I was the only woman, only woman of color. And so um, you just kind of get used to being the only one. But I have to say it was when I decided to run for office that um, I saw a lot more racism than I ever have. And I come from a sick American family, right? So my grandfather wears a turban, my husband wears a turban, my brother wears a turban. Um, and I, never saw myself running for office. I never did. I love doing policy work. I love working on criminal justice reform, on domestic violence issues, uh, mental health issues. And it was our federal election in 2016, where that December, for the very first time, I walked into a Democratic Party meeting. But what led me there was, again, as I mentioned briefly, was the rise in hate crimes we were seeing across our country. Uh, I got involved in hate crimes after 9-11 when a sick cab taxi driver was assaulted in uh, Seattle. And so I spent a lot of time working on that. And um, that November, I was invited to uh, the local mosque in our area, and they were having a huge safety forum. We had six police chiefs. I was there, and it was this huge auditorium just full of people. And everyone there was asking questions like, can I buy a car? Should I buy a house? Will I be allowed to live in this country? And I just remember sitting there thinking, I never remembered feeling this scared when I was growing up in California. And to see this room of individuals scared um, to live in America, um, it just frightened me. And I said, you know, our democracy has to represent each and every one of us. People have to see people that look like them in the halls of power. And so I attended my first Democratic Party meeting in December and announced I was running for office in February. Um, a lot happened between there. A, a lot of people had to um, tell me to run. And my reaction, which I now realize is very typical, the first words out of my mouth were, I don't think I'm qualified. And uh, this friend of mine just, she like, she literally fell off the chair laughing. Um, and so that kind of started the journey. But it is really important. I cannot tell you how many times I have been stopped at the grocery store, on the streets with young girls, uh, young girls who look like me, telling me that it's an inspiration to see me on TV, to see me out and about. So this is work I realize that we don't do just for ourselves at all. Um, and while we as women wear a lot of different hats, we as women of color represent so many more people. I don't just represent the 45th legislative district in Washington. I represent women of color in Washington. I represent sick Americans in the country. And so it is a huge privilege, um, but it also is something we have to be mindful of every single day in how we show up. 100%. Um, it's, it's so, it's wild how similar uh, I can say my experiences are. I mean, my first moments of understanding racism was after 9-11. Um, and I was I was in elementary school, so super young. Um, but growing up in Florida and Orlando, you know, it's a, it's a very diverse state. So, you know, prior to that, I was always the only Iranian next to my twin sister in our schools. But most folks assumed we were Latina and just, you know, kind of put us into different boxes because they didn't know where else to put us. And so, um, that we really didn't stick out as much, but after 9-11, that, that very much changed. And, you know, comments made about my physical appearance, comments made about um, uh, really uh, 
uh, you know, Middle East, mi Middle East community as a whole, because a lot of folks don't know the difference between, you know, Persians and, and other community groups. They kind of just throw you into one bucket as, as Senator Digra shared, like the, the violence exhibited towards the Sikh community. Um, same thing with the Iranian community, even though there was no connection with those attacks to different countries, it just didn't matter. We all of a sudden, all of our lived experiences just were combined, right? And uh, we all had to stand up for each other. And I, and I think that's a that was a really transformational moment for me too, in understanding how you know my my isolated experiences of racism are not isolated. It's actually part of a much larger problem around me. And as I grew up, um, uh, searching for you know what would be my um, my academic career, then my professional career, I never thought running for office was an option. I never even thought working in a nonprofit sector was an option. I mean. If you ask most Iranians, your parents tell you to study biology, chemistry, and physics. <laughs> and so, you know, going into liberal arts was already kind of a, a first in my family because most folks, you know, stay stay in the lanes where they they have job security is what it comes down to. I mean, so many immigrant families, they sacrifice so much for their children and they just want their kids to get a good job. So, you know, my dad was very much emphasizing the hard sciences versus anything else. But when I got to my university, I, I really became inspired with watching uh, the the democracy efforts in Iran and was really inspired by by seeing the calls for a functioning government that got me more interested in in political science. I had an amazing AP government teacher as well who pushed me in that direction. Um, but again, you know going back to this point around you know being the first, when I was making the decision to run for office, it was the same catalyst. It was after 2016 and I just felt so upset by the direction our country was going, by the election of a man in the most powerful office in our country, a man that rejected my identity and didn't think that people like me should even come to this country. I mean, that was so vitriolic for me. I mean, just this, this country that my parents worked so hard to call home was being taken away from us. That's, that's how I felt at the time. And, and, and that very much pushed me to build up the courage to decide to run for office. Um, and and it, it, it's, it's actually been really interesting, the number of folks that, after learning that I'm Iranian-American, share with me their stories of other Iranian-Americans in their life. And so whether it was their first boss, their roommate in college, one of their professors, um, their best friend, like it's really cool because you start hearing these incredible stories of other Iranian Americans in this person's life. And it, it kind of re elevates that notion of representation matters because my goal and everything that I do is, is to, is to very much lead on transformational change, but not just in systems, but also in culture. And I think to help break the stereotypes that communities like mine face, then it's so important that folks who have no Iranian friends, make Iranian friends, right? And and now they have a different perception whenever they hear the headlines, they think about state rep Anna, right? And just her experiences and the impact that we have in the community. And so it helps to loosen the tension. And there have been many moments with young girls, especially young girls and young girls of color um, who recognize me or, or, or we run into each other. And, and it's absolutely, um, a catalyst for them to think about running for office as well. And the number of young Iranians that have stopped studying hard sciences to study legal issues or, or, you know, political science is really cool. And I do think we're going to see more young people want to pursue this career path because they actually see this being viable for them.